Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to use UML to create a representation of some classes. So I've already started getting some basic information here inside the package. It's review.pm.ctech. We have a parking lot, we have spaces, and we have car objects. And we're going to add a UML diagram to this so we can actually explain some of those relationships. So again, we right click on our package, we choose new, we go down to other, and in our lovely giant list of stuff, we click down to the other section, and we have a UML or umlet diagram. Hit next. Put in where it needs to go. We want to put this inside our package we're working on. So we go down here to our UML project, and we go to the correct folder, which is inside our source, and then review, npm, and ctech. Obviously on a PC it looks a little bit different. And we want to give it a better name than newdiagram.uxf. So we'll call this the parking lot diagram. Because this is a representation of a parking lot project. And so here we have our UML setup for Umlet. Over here in the right we have all of our palettes. We have our properties window where we can edit file and information. And our paint area where we can drag things, drop things, move them around and use them. So we're going to go ahead and maximize this so we have a little bit of access. And we'll make a quick little note to ourselves. We'll do that by just doing on a simple class. We double click on something to add it in. And we edit code over here in the right. And so this is the parking lot project. And the class is involved. And we can do double lines to make a line in our code. And classes, I know it's a little bit off size. And so we have a car, we have a space, and we have car spaces, and we have a parking lot. And those are the objects we have in there. And as you can see, the actual drawing doesn't match what we type. So we have to go ahead and click on it so it's a little bit bigger. Woo! There we go. And we have a note. And we'll save that just to make sure it's saved. And we have that ready to go. And so first thing we want to do is we want to make our first object or class diagram. So we go ahead and double click on one of these. We drag it over. And we put our uh, package that it's in. And this is in review.pm.ctech. And it is the car object. And our middle section is where we put our data members. And what are some components of a car object? Window. And I use a minus sign to indicate that it's private. We then have a variable name. And normally, we'd have a colon and then a type. And so a window is of a window type. Not really the best thing. So it has windows of a window type. It has steering wheel of the steering wheel type. And yes, this is kind of like pseudocode. It's a way of organizing instruction or code so we can make sense. And so it goes negative for private, and then the variable name, and then a colon, and then the type. And again, we want to drag that out so we can see it. So negative to indicate private, variable name, and we'll even do variable name in camel case so it makes more sense a colon in the type. So window is a private object of window type. Steering wheel is a private object of steering wheel. And we'll do num passengers. And that's a int type. Because how many passengers can your car hold? You can't really hold half a person. So that would clearly be an integer value that we put in there. And then in the bottom section, we put our methods and our constructors. And if you notice right here, I surrounded my word with slashes, and it made it so it is then italicized up here, nice and pretty. And what are some of the methods? The first one I heard were getters and setters. And because getters and setters are going to be all over the place, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them, the plus sign first indicates that it's a public variable or public entity. And then we'll have the method name, and then a colon and then the return type is the structure for that. And so, as we were saying a second ago, the first thing we have to have, ever, these are going to have our getters and setters. Those, of course, are public. 
And we can abbreviate that because they're going to be fairly standard. We can just do git slash set using parens to indicate, of course, that they're methods. And I'm not going to give the return type on getters and setters because those are automatically associated with the variables they're attached to. So we have our getters and setters. What is a method that a car will do? So it doesn't return anything, so it would be a void. And again, notice how I'm putting those parens in there. And like that, it looks a little bit hard to see with them being open and closed just by themselves. Let's try look at putting a space in there, see how it looks. Oh, that looks much more legible. So we'll put a space in between our parens, make sure it's much more legible. And so run, open and close parens, meaning it has no parameters on there, and it's of type void. And then how about shift? Would that be a good method for a car? And shift will take a parameter, int gear, and that would return a Boolean. Did it shift right? Yes or no? Generally, hopefully, you actually shifted into the right gear. So it would return true if you got into the right gear. It would return false if you did not go into the gear. We shift and we, pat we show that the parameter is an int. And we give a, a default name for that parameter. And even though right now our car.java has nothing in it, if I go back over here, change that and pull up car.java, it's blank. But we have given ourselves a framework with this using UML that we know automatically some of those key components we want to put in. So going back to our diagram, however, our cars are going to go into a parking lot. And so we also have right here, we want to add a data member. And it's going to be a private data member, my parking lot. And what type is it? That's a parking lot. And we might need to see if it's in a parking lot or not, because it's not, a car is not always in the parking lot. Go ahead and let's make our parking lot class. We double click on our class framework again. It's a parking lot class. And what kind of data members would a parking lot have? A num spaces. That's an int. And then a num cars, because that would be different in the spaces, right? And that's also an int. And maybe it has a fee. And that would probably be a double. So it has a number of spaces and number of cars. And I, I shortened that with num spaces, num cars, but because it, you know the magic of Java, we can actually have number of cars. Ooh. Number of spaces. We don't have to worry about how big our variable names are. We can keep track of that. And it has a fee that's a double. How much is it, is it going to be charging to park there? And then it would have what kind of methods would it have? What can a parking lot do? Okay. So we can have park. And that would probably be a void. And we have a charge method. And that would return the fee, right? So it's going to return a double value. We also have the fact that it's going to have some cars in it. So we can show that by attaching our lovely line. And it will have cars. And so we, by again, by connecting those little circles right here, if we connect the circle to the edge of something, it will then allow it so that we can then maneuver it and it'll stay connected. And it's a arrow and we'll say that m1 equals and then 0 dot dot n because a parking lot can have zero cars and it can have lots of cars and so now we have our parking lot we have our car and we also have our spaces that we need to put in there and so we can have that basic setup and so we'll make a quick one here for spaces the spaces one we're not going to spend as much time on it has a size of a space. Whether or not it's occupied will turn Boolean or not. Parking lot has spaces. It has zero to n spaces. We can have them be filled or not. We have that basic structure and we can show that using this UML that we can then help design our code and match this accordingly. Now the next thing with Umlet that we can do with UML, of course we want to save it again. Magic, hit the save all. But we can export this out as a JPEG or a PDF, so it's easy to share with someone. Say, for example, you want to turn in a design project for your assignment. Go ahead, export it as a PDF. 
You save it in the folder, automatically defaults to your folder of your package, and parking.diagram.pdf saved, and you now have a PDF of that you can send in to your teacher for e um, credit for your assignments.